Hello everyone, this is Rain Ante Martinez and welcome to my first video tutorial ever. In this video, I will be showing you how I created the final look and feel on one of the rendered images from Project Looks Escape via Blender's compositing nodes. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we get our feet wet though, there are a few requirements that we need to be aware of. First and foremost, of course, we need an image to compose it and in our case here, the render from Project Looks Escape. Next is, we should also be able to determine the dimensions of the image that we are going to compose it. Usually, we could check this by right-clicking on the image, then under the Properties option, you could check their size. Next is, we should at least have Blender 2.65 and up. So we could go to blender.org, then under the download section, we could check their the latest stable release of Blender. Or if not, if you wanted to download the latest Bleeding Edge, you could go to builder.blender.org and download the build for your OS. This is so we could take advantage of the latest improvements and compositing speedups. And last but not the least, a general idea on what we really want to achieve. And with all that aside, let's fire up Blender. After firing up Blender, we are presented with this default screen where we have this splash screen here then a couple of buttons. So you'll notice here that the version of Blender I have now is 2.65.9, revision number 54201 which I got from builder.blender.org. So we can just simply click the splash screen to make it go away. And we are still here in the 3D viewport which we don't really need for now since we are going to use Blender's compositing nodes. And with this, let's just switch to the compositing or the node editor in Blender. We could do this by clicking here down below and choosing the node editor or easily we could press the shortcut key shift F3 and we're immediately switched here. The first thing that we need to do here is to add the initial image. For this tutorial, um, I will be using five distinct images each one having different properties. Um, let's say we have the raw render, uh, we have the volumetric lights, the dust particles, and etc. So we'll add the first image, namely that's the raw render. Oh, before I forget, um, we should also change the mode from material nodes to compositing nodes here below. So click that, and then click use nodes. Instantly, we are presented with two nodes here. We have the render layers node and we have the composite node. For now, we won't be needing the render layers node, so select it by right clicking and press X or delete on your keyboard. Consecutively, we should add the image via pressing Shift A or going here to add, then input, then press or select image. Just like in Blender's viewport, we could move this around by selecting, right click, and pressing G. So let's just move it around this area. I have to inform you though that these methods are not solid rules, so just wanted to let you know before we delve into it deeper. These are not solid rules and stone edge. Uh, methods that you have to follow so do whatever floats your boat and in addition to this I will be splitting the process into parts so you can easily navigate through the necessary parts that you wish to inspect later on so going back select the image and then click the open button then let's browse here over the folder that we have and locate the image that we want to input. So here in this case I will be selecting it should be titled looks room not likes room sorry about that so looks room row that exr so once that's in we could check the preview here small window and 
I'll tell you later why we need the OpenEXR as the option and not uh, the other raster formats like PNG, JPEGs, etc. Also, you could you notice here there's a properties panel on the right which most people call the end panel which is kind of funny. So here we have, let's take a look. In here we have the active node which you could label, change the name, etc. and you could check the path here. Uh, the thing to note here though is the performance tab which uh, drastically improves the performance or the speed up of your viewport of your render. So I usually leave it the edit as low or medium or whatever depending on how <coughs> powerful your computer is. So in my case I'll leave it to medium then I'll just click hide preview and highlight. Highlight will show which nodes are being processed during the C rendering of the nodes. So once the image is inputted I could hide this now by pressing N and better yet I'll press shift space or control up arrow to maximize my compositing window. So moving this around I'm just pressing the middle mouse button. Next is I want to add a contrast to this image by I had up to use the color balance node instead of the brightness contrast and the RGB curves which are usually used on other uh, images and other projects but I'll let you know why. So adding color balance here and just moving it here then there are also ways on how to connect nodes in Blender. You could either drag the image output here and drag the image output then connecting it to the image input of the color balance or better yet you could just select the color balance then shift select the image and press F to connect. So instantly these two are now connected. The reason I'm using the color balance node is that I get more control over the shadows which is this left part here, the midtones and the highlights. So I could dictate which part I want to uh, increase the contrast of, increase the brightness of and so on. So here I just added the color balance node and let's label this thing as contrast here on the properties panel. Contrast and instantly you get the contrast label here on the header of the color balance node. However, you'll notice that we're not seeing any results now. This is because we don't have any viewer node yet or we have the backdrop disabled so let's just enable the backdrop and to add a viewer node instantly you can just press Control shift and left click on the contrast node or if you wish you could press shift a output then viewer so move this around here and there's also one technique i wanted to share with you uh, which Sebastian Cooney shared with me before during our project in uh, I think that's the 48 hour film project so whatever node you have selected you could just hold the control and shift buttons on your keyboard and pressing left click quite nifty tool a method I must say so control shift left click here connects the viewer node to the contrast node if you want to connect the if you wanted to the image node, just press Ctrl, Shift, and left click. So, it alternatively pops in the viewer node to the active node. So proceeding, with the contrast node selected, we just need to somehow enhance the contrast here. So for the shadows part, let's bring it down a bit. Oops, it's a little bit too much. So, just a tad bit, I think. Then the highlights, let's bring it up. Just a little bit. I think I overdid the shadow. 
Oops. Okay, that will do for now. So we'll make adjustments as we go on. Next is we add another color balance node, which will be used as a colorizing node to sum it up. So let's press Shift A and click color, then color balance node. Then just move this around into the middle here until you see the line highlighted which is a cool new feature in Blender now, which is not present in, I think, 2.64 and the older versions. So, yeah, thanks for that cool new feature. So here, our aim here is to just colorize the image as more nightish or bluish, so to speak. So on the shadows part, let's add a tint of blue. Right now though, the backdrop image is not seen very well since these nodes are obscuring my view. So what we have to do here is just press Alt V, oh, I mean V, to zoom it out. And I think that's better. So we adjusted the shadows part to be a little bit tinted with blue. Then now is the mid tones. Let's just give it a little blue boost too. You can see we're getting more of the nightish look now. Then finally, I'll just push the orange more. So on this highlights area, I'm moving to the orange part and increasing the orange. I think this will do for now. Okay. Next thing is to add another image input, which will be the holder for our dust particles. So, pressing Shift A, going to input, then image. Just position it here for clarity. Then open. Then let's browse again to that folder where we have our renders. So here, I'll choose the dust, the transparency, and the EXR file format. So double-clicking that will open it here. Okay. We actually don't need to do any color correction on that best image so we could simply now hook an alpha node alpha over node I mean by pressing shift A going to color then alpha over node move this over here to connect it so now you see white since the default is white here the white is being alpha over the original image so clicking alpha over node right clicking select then shift select the dust particles image and press F. So we see here the effect that it's having now. So the dust particles which has a transparency is being overlaid or alpha over to the original image. I think this is it for the two images. So we'll add another image here on part one. So shift A input image and position it here again then open the image I wonder if it keeps going here doesn't remember my last path anyhow raw then this time I'll choose the halo EXR but not the transparent one so you'll see why in a second If we do a control shift and left click on the halo image here, we can see that this is the render that we had. Uh, I have to thank Daniel Kreuter for this tip since this is actually isn't a cycles render, but 
it's actually a render from Blender internal, then it will be composited over later here with the cycles render. So that's quite a neat trick. And I will link you below later on where to check the tutorial by Daniel Carter. One of the comments I got when I submitted the initial renders render of Looks Escape was that um, the light beam was either too blue or too white. Or, but then we wanted it a bit having a purplish and pinkish tint. So I resolved that by adding RGB curves. Okay, here we add a color and RGB curves node and connecting it here just beside the halo image so here we just have to play with the settings a little bit what worked for me though was to boost the C channel here or I think this is the contrast channel up a bit here to make it brighter was here yeah I just bring it up here and here that should do then the red channel I didn't touch so let's proceed to the green channel let's left click to add a new point then just bring it down a bit bring it down and let's proceed to the blue channel bring it up Tweak the green channel a bit. I think this will do for now. Okay, now that we have this set up, what I wanted to do now was to intensify the effect of the dust particles. Since if we hook up the viewer node with the dust particles image and change this to solid for now, so we can check. Here's how it looks. However, I wanted only to see the part where the beam touches the dust particles right around this area here. However, we'll use the totality of these dust particles later on. And sorry about the quality of the dust particles here. It was only rendered with the uh, low samples, I think. Yeah. So to achieve that effect that I mentioned a while back, let's just add a I think it's color. Yeah, color. Then mix node. Then hook it up here. And while the mix node is still active, let's shift select the dust particles input image and press F to connect the two. Then Let's change the mix type from mix to multiply. So now you see the effect that I meant a while back. So where the beam was touching the dust particles, this is only the part that is now being processed or so far seen by us viewers. If we change this now, we even get more exaggerated effect so let's leave this on the setting let's move this here and finally for this first part we'll now connect the dust particles um, the halo image and the raw render together. So we do this by adding another mix node, color, then mix, then we'll change this to screen, then shift select the alpha over node, pressing F, then selecting the screen node again, then selecting the multiply node from a while back, then pressing 
f then we don't actually need to do to select a few more nodes for the screen here we could just simply press ctrl shift and left click this one changing the factor to 2 so this is roughly the effect that we want for now I think yeah then we'll get over with the other parts next like improving the halos and whatnot so let's proceed to part 2 of this tutorial Moving over to part 2 of this tutorial, which is merely adding the effects and beautifying what we have achieved from part 1. So to do that, let's first add our initial node, which is, in this case, let's add a filter node, a blur node, and the blur type, let's change from Gaussian to Fast Gaussian. This is faster to calculate for Blender and somehow it gives you the same effect that you have for Gaussian. So let's move this over here to see the output and change the X and Y values to 15. Tab 15. Press enter. So you'll see the effect immediately here in the preview. However, this isn't what we want. So let's proceed. Let's add another blur node, filter, blur. Move this over here, change it to fast Gaussian. Change the X and Y values to 5. Then hook it up again here. Then we will be combining the effects of both of these blur nodes by adding color, mix, and screen. So select the screen node, shift select the first blur node and press F, do the same to the other blur node, press F, and control shift left click to see the effect. Somehow we're getting this odd value clipping here, so let's lower down our value, 0.6. And let's change the order here. Way better. So we're almost done here. There are just a few things left to do, like combining the original image with this effect that we have. So let's add another mix node, changing it to screen. Moving it here to connect it automatically. So with the screen node selected, Let's shift select the alpha over node and press F. Let's try switching this segment. Selecting these two nodes here via the box select. Mode Shift D to duplicate. Moving it here. Instead of doing that again, which is quite cumbersome. So, in essence, we're just gonna connect these two nodes together. So, add color node, mix node, connect it here change the type to screen this is an effect we want though i'm sure so we're gonna lower down the factor until we get satisfied with the results I 
I think quite one will do. So this concludes this part. Let's move on to part three, which is mostly the finishing touches. So moving on to the final part of this tutorial, which is mostly adding the finishing touches plus of course adding a background image here. So let's move the viewer and the composite nodes aside. Firstly, we need to add an image node which will serve as our background image. And let's browse. In my case, I used an HDR image which was provided by the team to be used as background for this. So control shift left click on this will preview it in the back backdrop. However, this is too huge right now and we need to scale it down to match the render size of our image. To do so, we need to add a distort node and scale. Attach it here. Change the type from relative to render size and leave the default values as is. Then next thing is we need to add a an RGB curve just so we could simulate the overexposure effect that we get behind the window. So I'll just boost the contrast and brightness up. Not too much though. I think that will do. I think that's it for the background image. Now we need to add a few stars in there. What I did was to add an image of fireworks. Duplicate the scale node and apply it the same here. So now if we connect a mix node with type screen, you'll notice this effect here that we have for our preview. However, there are quite a number of stars below and we want those to be seen on the image above. So to do that, we'll add a distort node and translate then connect it here and yes you guessed it right we'll change the value of y i think that will do for now After this, we'll just need to do a little bit of coloring for the sky. Not much though. And then finally, a slight blur to simulate the depth of field effect we would rather get if this was part of the final render image okay now it's time to hook up this image to the original rendered image that we have so adding a color and alpha over now connecting that here then we have the check convert to multiply so as we can see the effect behind so making a few adjustments on the brightness just so we could match it here I think that's okay then before we conclude this let's just add a few more eye candies here 
So I'll add a texture which will serve as my vignette. Yep, a texture as a vignette. So I will not be using math nodes to generate vignettes here. Um, as far as I'm concerned, with the all with all of my pieces that I have done before, it's mostly this thing that I use for my vignettes. The reason is that I get more flexibility over the fall of the, sh the sharpness and whatnot. So let's hook it here via alpha over node. However, this is too much though, it's like peeping through a hole, which we don't want. So let's scale it. X value it's 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Yep, I think that should be good. And finally, to conclude, let's add color balance node. Just to colorize everything a tad bit. And that's about it. Let's hook the image output to the image input of the compositor node. And pressing F12, we now have this final image. Thank you. To sum it up, we learn how to compose it dust particles. We also learn how to compose it the pseudo halo lights which we have rendered from render internal then combine it with the cycles renders. And finally we learned how to color grade and increase the contrast of certain images via the color balance node and we also learned a few things here and there. In addition to that, here's a progression video from the process. If you have any comments and suggestions, please feel free to write it below or write me an email at rainantem at gmail.com. And also, please visit the link shown on your screen right now. Thank you so much for watching.